My name's Jane Benefield, I'm the Floristry Course Manager over at Morton Moral College and I've been asked today by the British Florist Association to produce a funeral item which is biodegradable um, as part of our sustainable practice. I've chosen to do what I call an ordinary funeral item, something which a commercial florist shop would do day in, day out um, as part of their funeral offering. So I've chosen to do a double-ended spray, a smallish double-ended spray, but I'm going along the garden flower type of um, materials which are very popular currently. So in order for it to be biodegradable, I've got a bamboo container. Um, I've also got a piece of slate. Now you might be wondering why this piece of, what use this piece of slate is. The slate is to weigh the bamboo down. Um, because we're not using floral foam, the weight isn't quite as heavy because we're using moss. So therefore we need something to weigh it down so that the funeral spray is not going to fly off into the distance. Okay, uh, I've also got a piece of felt and the felt's going to go underneath the piece of slate um, so that it's nice and soft and nothing's going to scratch or damage the coffin or the surface that it's going onto. So first of all, I'm going to do this in several stages. So the first stage is going to be putting together the mechanics that we're going to use for making this spray. So as a water source, I'm going to be using sphagnum moss. Um, now sphagnum moss, you need to make ensure that it's from a sustainable source. So just check out your suppliers and ask them if it's um, sustainably grown. Moss is very, very slow growing. So it's really important that you, can, that you check this out. Um, it's also not quite as good as a water source um, as a traditional floral foam. So we need to ensure that it's damp um, and we also need to ensure that we water it really well um, the day before the funeral. All the items that I'm using have been tested overnight. I've made a spray and I've left it in the cooler and they've all lasted and stood up and they've used the, the moss as a water source, so as a, a water retaining um, medium. So first of all, I'm going to pop that into the tray. Make sure that you tease out the moss. So really pull it apart and get out any of these nasty little twigs and um, put them in the bin or any needles or any bugs that might be in there. Okay, moss, even when it's dried out, you can bring it back to life or um, make it useful for as a water um, retaining source by pouring water directly on it. So once I've got that moss ready and nicely teased, I'm going to pop it into the container. We want it firm enough that your finger can just about go through, but not so loose that your finger goes directly to the bottom. So fill up the container and then I'm going to sandwich the piece of slate. And I'll do the slate first, I think, before the felt. And I've got some lovely twine here, some garden twine. Oops, that's blown off in the wind. We're filming here at Morton Moral College and it, we've chosen to film outside because it's better um, for visibility, but it's very windy. And apologise if the cat goes past or a tractor. Okay, we are in an agricultural college. Okay. So binding this on with this lovely string. I'm very partial to string. It's very useful to always have a ball of string and a knife and a pair of scissors. Handy. And then we can tie that. So traditionally people would use chicken wire over the top, but I found that just using string is just as good. Um, and also we've got to comes from. So if chicken wire is produced um, in China and then shipped over to the UK, is that sustainable practice? Also, does it biodegrade? So just ask yourself all these questions if a customer has chosen a biodegradable item. Right, so I can just pop that on. You could glue it on with hot glue. However, I don't think that's very sustainable. So I'm going to tie it on with the string over the top. And because we're commercial florists, we're very good at tying nice tight knots. So we've done plenty of hand tights. Okay, 
once you're happy with that, cut knot nice and tight. Try not to put too much twine over the top because you've got to think that the flower material has to go into that um, moss so you don't want it hitting the string every five minutes. So just check that everything's neat and tidy. You can trim the moss a little bit above the bamboo container. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place in the greenery. Um, so I'll show you that in, I've already done, I've already greened one up. So I'll find that and show you how to do that. Okay, so this double-ended spray is now greened up as we would traditionally green up a, a spray if we were using a plastic container and a different medium. Um, so I have damped the moss slightly, like so, uh, in order for it to be nice and easy for you to place the materials in. When you're placing the materials in, it's really important that you cut at a 45 degree angle and then poke it in once and then twice so that you get that really firm grip within the funeral spray. Okay, I have used a little bit of bracken in here. Um, just wanted that sort of cutting garden, late summer, early autumn vibe to the, um, the piece. And it's going to be quite a natural piece as well. So I'm going to start off with some persicaria. And that's going to be the points of my funeral spray. Those people that, will, that know me know that I absolutely love my garden flowers, um, but I have made sure that everything that I'm using um, is either available from a cutting garden from an English grower, a British grower, um, or is also available commercially via Holland. So all the things that I'm using are available as a commercial cut material. So it's just quite nice just to have that juxtaposition between the different colours of foliage. So I've used the silver grey of the eucalyptus against the dark green of the box and then that lovely seasonal bracken which you could substitute with maybe with Quercus with oak if you didn't have anywhere where you could go foraging for bracken. Okay. So I'm just doing a bit of an outline with my persicaria. Generally, I would start with, um, in, normally when I was making a single-ended, a double-ended spray, I would start with the focal line, but I found that when I'm using moss, this moss and string method, um, it's easier to start with the outline first. There's no right or wrong as long as the shape is correct at the end and it's just got that lovely natural wild feeling to it. I also think it's quite important that you consider what's in season. So everything here is in season. Um, I think if I was to suddenly go and pop some orchids in here, um, it just wouldn't suit the style of the arrangement that I'm doing. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, the important thing with funeral items is that you keep checking them from above so that the outline, that's not in properly. So you've really, really got to make sure that everything is in very securely into the moss. But yeah, just keep checking them from above. Keep looking down on it, making sure that you're keeping that lovely diamond shape at all times. Sometimes when you're learning it's a good idea to um, draw a template for yourself. So when we learn here in college when we're learning our double-ended sprays we get an old flower box and draw out a template so that we've got something to measure it against. Okay, right so 
I'm going to go in with my focal flowers and I'm using these absolutely glorious VIP roses. Um, and this variety is called Notting Hill. It's a wonderful substitute um, for a garden rose. I did want to use some of the garden roses that we've got growing here in the cutting garden, um, but they just looked slightly too mothy to me. Okay. Um, but these are wonderful. Okay, so I'm cutting at a 45 degree angle. Um, I use Japanese scissors, which give a nice sharp cut, or you could use a knife as well. So that gives a nice clean cut, so it's good to insert it into the moss. It's not quite as easy as inserting into foam, but I think you can see that it doesn't take that much longer. And really, when you see the finished piece, it's very, very secure. Um, and as I say, I made one of these with exactly the same materials yesterday, uh, sprayed it and stored it in our cooler, and it was perfect this morning. So I've got no worries about the lasting quality of these materials in foam, uh, sorry, in moss. Okay, so then coming through with these wonderful echinacea. Beautiful, aren't they? One of my favourite flowers. And it's great now. Lots and lots of garden materials are available commercially. So you can see I've done a bit of an outline with my echinacea there and keep turning it around so that it's equal on both sides. Okay, the wind's died down a little bit. Haven't seen the cat yet though, the floristry cat. We have great fun over here at Mortal Moral with all the animals herding off the sheep from our cutting garden this morning. It wasn't fun. Okay, sometimes I find that if it won't go into the um, moss quite as well, if you wiggle it around, a bit of a corkscrew effect, and then it gradually goes down into the moss. Okay. Right, next I think I will go with some of these echinacea. Beautiful colour and another lovely round form. It's good to consider a variety of forms in your designs. So I've mainly got round here, but I've got then got the spike of the persicaria. So think about the placement of the materials as well. So it's really important that the placements are good, um, that you've thought about your flower placement Oop, within the design. Right, again, poking it in, giving it a little twist round. Just get my focal flower to stand upright. Like that. Okay, and I'll just grab some greenery. Okay, I'll just put some more of this echinacea in. I've added some quite low down to give some recession or depth to the design. Checking, checking all the time, making sure it's even on both sides. Hope the wind doesn't blow over the vase like it did earlier. We need to start all over again. Is it going to? Kieran's my lovely cameraman today. He might have to leap into action, grab the vase as it goes flying off. I hope not.
So I think generally if someone asks for a biodegradable item, we leap to our immediately to a willow cross or a willow heart because that's how what we know um, to do. But there are lots of different options nowadays. But when Julie asked me to do this video, I chose to do a double-ended spray because I thought, well, that's what we generally get asked for. And I do want to show you how on a commercial scale that it's just as easy to create a double-ended spray, a commercial piece, using moss as it is to using any other medium. Okay, then I'm going to fill in with another spike flower. This time of year is so wonderful. So many herbaceous plants and flowers available. And then in the winter you can get creative by using more dried materials and mixing them in with fresh, which seems to be quite a trend currently. I would always use a bin, but I am trying to make this video slightly faster than normal. So I'm just throwing it on the ground. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell our cleaner. Okay. I think the thing that I find slightly disconcerting about making videos is there's no response from anybody. So generally I've got a group of students in front of me and we talk and we discuss each flower. We talk about what we're doing. So that's what I find hard about videos. Okay, so same method of popping the materials in, just ensuring that they're into the moss nice and firmly. Next I'm going to go with some of these beautiful dahlias. Look at them. Oh, so gorgeous. Love this time of year. Dahlia time. Although it's always a little bit sad when it's dahlia time because it's towards the end of the summer. The thing with dahlias is you need to check that they haven't got any earwigs in them. So particularly if they're grown on a flower farm. So I'm just um, checking we've got no eerie wigs. Not so much a problem at a funeral, but imagine a bridal bouquet when an earwig crawls out. Right, again, just really make sure that it's in once and twice, so it's in nice and firmly into the moss. Sphagnum moss is really quite interesting. I was brought up in the Lake District um, and we always knew that sphagnum moss was an antiseptic so that if you were ever stranded out in the fells and you needed to clean some water, you would put the water, say you were really stranded, you'd put water through sphagnum moss and that would clean it. Luckily I didn't have to test that out. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to put in is some of these apples. So they've got a lovely bloom on them, can you see? So it tones in very nicely with the colours. Um, and the way, the method that I've used to put these um, into the funeral spray is I've got a skewer and I've gone straight in that nice and firmly. Whoops, don't come through the other side, so don't do that. Go like that. Tug it, make sure it's in nice and firmly and then you can pop that in like so. Ooh. Nice thing about using something like this is it really doesn't need a water source and it really will last. Uh, right, so let's fiddle that in. Oop, that won't go in. There we go. I've put these quite towards the centre because they're a little bit heavier than some of the flowers. I don't want them leaping out. And I think you'll agree that that gives a really 
seasonal touch to the fumal spray. Turning it around so that you can see. And so it's nice and even. There's no need to use garden flowers in something like this. I've chosen to because it's what I had available. You could use ordinary carnations and chrysanthemums, exactly the same method as I'm using here. Popping in a bit of echinacea. Right, next I'm gonna go with my sedum. So sedum, great at this time of year. And another advantage to it is that it doesn't require a huge amount of water. In fact, it hardly needs any. So it's wonderful to use in something like this. What a beautiful colour. Very popular. I think we have to embrace this change, the sustainable push towards sustainability and we have to show how creative we are and how we can come up with methods to ensure that we bring sustainable practice into our working methods. Oh, the insects are going wild here. It's very nice, surrounded in with bees. Hope it doesn't rain, Kieran. <gasps> Kieran's being quiet, he doesn't want to appear on camera. Okay. Right, the other thing I do with my sprays is I always turn it to end on as well, so just to check you've got no holes here. So I think I'm just going to fill that in with a bit of this. I also think that it's great if we can offer these to, or things like this, to um, customers, even if they haven't thought of it themselves. So if they come in and they've ordered a double-ended spray and they say, oh, the lady loved garden-style flowers or um, the lady, you know, or the customer doesn't specify, just at least offer it or do it as a matter of course anyway. So you just do all of your sprays using the moss method. Honestly, once you have a go, it's great. There's no, and also cheaper. Right, so just going in with a couple of orange geums. I need another apple. Love that little zing of orange. Thinking about colour harmonies as well. Blending your colours together. Right, and I'm nearly done. I'm going to put in a little bit of Achillea. Again, Achillea dries beautifully, so you know then it doesn't need a huge amount of water. So you can risk using it in any item 
but just experiment, just have a go. Have a go at doing something in moss. Also, just do think about all of every single item that you use. So, actually, if you're go, wanting to go with chicken wire, just check where does the chicken wire come from? Is it sustainably produced? Does it biodegrade? So, find out the answers to those questions before you start using things. One thing I've learned today is I don't have a glass water spray bottle, which I ought to have. I've only got a plastic one. So I'm going to, when I've finished doing this video, I'm going to research glass water spray bottles. We all have glass drinking bottles now, don't we? Right, so going around filling up this in. Making sure everything radiates or appears to radiate from under the focal flower. In there and I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of you might wonder what this is this is dried willow herb and it's just giving a little bit of a tone and a seasonality to the filler trying to ward off the bees Pneumonium would be suitable for filling in as well. Well, any of the traditional flowers. So you could just make an exactly um, the same double-ended spray that you make in foam. You could make in moss. But do, if you're using garden materials, do test them out first. And that goes for weddings and funerals. Always test your garden materials. Don't assume that they're going to last as long as commercially grown materials. Glass, always the way, isn't it? The last bit won't go in. There we go. Right, I can hear horses going by now. Uh, because the moss looks really nice and natural, it doesn't matter if it's seen slightly through the spray. In fact, it's quite nice just to have bit of transparency so that you can see through items. So then just spin it around, just check all the materials, groom any, take any petals off the roses if they're damaged. Check that you're transitioning from the outline up to the focal. So you just haven't got an outline and then a focal line. You've got to transition between the two. You don't want a circle with two pointy ends. It is absolutely a diamond shape. Check, check, check. Nearly done. I hope we get done before it rains. It does look like it might rain. won't be bad for the flowers. Okay. Right, 
kemana? And once you're done, really good spray. And you can see nothing falling out. It's very stable. Everything's in water or in um, moss that is keeping the ends of the flowers really damp and you could pour some more water on the top like that pop it in the cooler and then just a matter of putting on the card in the morning and then delivering it to the undertakers so there is my biodegradable double-ended funeral spray do hope you've enjoyed this on behalf of the british florist association thank you very much for watching